Hello, welcome back to this bonus episode of this video series, The Parasite Journey of the Horse. So my name is Martin Nielsen, and I sit here in my research lab at the University of Kentucky, uh, and I am thrilled to talk about this next parasite. So upon multiple requests, at least two uh, people have asked me if I could talk about pinworms of horses. And so um, let's do that. I, I'm very happy to do so. So pinworms um, is also in Latin called oxyuris equi. And um, it is related to the pinworm that people can get, but it is a different species. And you do not get pinworms from horses. Also pinworms do not cross over from people to horses. So why is this parasite important to talk about? Well, I want to say for the record that on these groups on Facebook where you can ask a veterinarian about things, I want to say that the number one parasite we get questions about is pinworm. Uh, it's the typical question where somebody looked through their poop, uh, their horse's poop, of course, and then found some worms. They took a picture and they uh, posted it on one of those groups. So you can look at just a few different screenshots here where people uh, have found pinworms. They're not really sure what it is. Uh, they're asking, is it a large strongyl? Could it be a roundworm? Uh, what on earth is going on? Uh, I just dewormed three weeks ago. Why are these coming out now? So that alone, I think, is enough justification for us to actually talk about this worm it seems to be one that some people are not really aware of, but a lot of people see it. And why do you see it? Well, it's, um, it's pretty large. Here's, here's a, a collection of some adult uh, female pinworms that are, are collected from the feces of a horse where they came out and um, uh, they're white. You see them very clearly. I tried putting them in this Petri dish. I, I don't know if you can see, but I'm gonna pull up a picture in a little bit. Um, so you can get an idea of, um, of what they look like. Here's that picture of that same Petri dish. So these can be three to five centimeters long. So that's two, one to two inches long. Um, and so they, they stand out, they're white, and they have this, this sort of um, pin shape. So you have that needle shape with the tapered tail at one end. That's one way to tell them from some of these other worms that you guys are asking about. And so, um, so that's what they look like. Now, what we look at here, and I'll get back to this, these are only the females. We actually rarely ever see the boys for some reason. Uh, so the, the female worms are the ones that we see. And so um, what about the life cycle of this parasite? And I think, you know, listen in here because there's a couple important points to, to this life cycle. Uh, first of all, the infective stage is the egg um, that then impregnates in the environment. Horse somehow ingests these in, in, impregnated and infective eggs, and then the eggs will hatch inside of the intestine. Out come the larvae. Uh, there are descriptions in ancient literature from the 1930s that these larvae actually migrate and invade the mucosal wall of the large intestine. Now, apparently that's a very transient phenomenon because when we look in, in samples from the mucosal wall, we, we never really find these larvae. So there must be something that's very brief if it happens at all. And, and then they make it out into the lumen of the large intestine and that's where they hang out for their, uh, the entirety of their life. And I emphasize this large intestine, dorsal colon. We are far, far away from the rectum. And there's a point uh, I wanna make here. So males and females hang out there, they, they mate, and then, um, you know, when we look and, and we collect all of these worms, um, we, we rarely find any males at all. It's like, I don't know what's going on with the relationship uh, with these worms between males and females, but the boys are just never around where, whenever you seem to be needing them, they kinda do their thing and then they disappear. You know, who's heard about that before? And then the girls have to do all the hard work. Uh, 
And that includes taking this long, strenuous journey from the dorsal colon and all the way down uh, through the rectum to the anus, where they then deliver their eggs out to the environment and die. So this is a suicide mission. So like I said, a little bit of a skewed balance between the who takes which chores in, in those relationships. So let's take a look at a female worm that it's coming out and she's about to deliver her eggs. Hey, <clears throat> hey, wrong side, wrong side. Uh, he hello. Are you suggesting that this is looking better than me? Well, yeah, th th there might be a point there, but um, what about if I promise that this will be the last video? Will you please remove this? <sighs> Thank you. Uh, and let's get it up uh, on the other side of the screen. There we go. So what's happening here is uh, the female is protruding her rear end outside of the anus and she's delivering this big gooey yellow substance and it's a big volume when you consider the size of the worm. Uh, and that's eggs that are embedded in this sticky proteinaceous mass that sticks to the skin around the anus. Um, then uh, she will die and she will come out. So some of those worms that you actually see in the poop of your horse uh, are some of these females that have just delivered their eggs. Um, and then what happens is that this, this yellow substance mass here is drying, becomes flaky and irritating and itchy. And then you see these hor horses that are having the itchy bum, the, they're rubbing their rear ends against objects. We call it the tail rubbing. Uh, that's the, the most common or actually really the only manifestation uh, of this parasite. And so um, one thing I need to also emphasize is, is how you diagnose this parasite. Because the eggs are delivered to this location outside of the intestinal tract, we cannot use fecal egg counts for determining the presence of this parasite. Uh, we, can, we can detect the eggs, but we have to take either a scrape uh, with a tongue depressor or something like that and look at that under the microscope or a tape, a scotch tape impression test where you take some tape and you stick it up against the skin and then you put it on a slide and you look at it under the microscope and then you can see eggs that look like this. These eggs are very characteristic. They uh, really look like no other parasite egg that you can find in, uh, from a horse. And so once you see these eggs, you know that you have pinworms. And so that's a little bit about the diagnosis. And how common are these parasites? Well, when the, based on these Facebook posts where people ask questions, what worm is this? Uh, these are very common. And I wanna say that every horse will encounter and also harbor this parasite at at least one point in its life. We do not see a declining trend with age. So there appears to be very little or limited uh, immune response to this parasite. So an adult horse is just as likely to having uh, the parasite as a younger horse is. We, we don't see it in the youngest foals, but once you get to weaning age, uh, and beyond, that's actually where we can start seeing uh, these eggs uh, around the anus of these foals even. So foals, weanlings, and, and yearlings, uh, we, we do see it there too. And so extremely common parasite. Um, and what about disease? So if you're still watching, you're probably watching because you've had a horse or you have a horse right now that's struggling with this parasite. It's interesting because the parasite is actually really harmless in itself. It doesn't cause any discomfort in the intestinal tract, doesn't cause any diarrhea, any colic, or anything like that, but it causes that itchy bum. And in some horses, uh, a lot of horses have pinworms and you don't even notice that uh, they have it. But then a few horses will have that itchy bum. And then in a, in a smaller subset of those horses, it can seem to sort of go crazy. Uh, these horses keep itching, and you keep deworming with all kinds of stuff and nothing seems to work. And uh, the, the worms keep coming back. And many of you have actually observed the worms. Uh, you have observed these egg packets that I talked about before. I mean, so you know that, that these are caused by pinworms. However, I do want to emphasize that there are 
other causes of itchy bum, tail rubbing in horses besides the pinworm. So just because you have a horse that's itching its bum up against objects does not mean that it necessarily has pinworms. There are fungal infections, bacterial infections, allergic conditions that can all cause similar symptoms. So please work with your vet to rule those out uh, before you blame it all on the worms. Um, but like I said, this can happen uh, and um, horse owners try all kinds of things. They try to clean the environment, they wash the rear end of their horses as often as they can, and they try to administer uh, relevant um, dewormers. And um, let's get to that. So what can we actually treat with? So again, this is tricky, but first of all, there is drug resistance reported to ivermectin on several different continents. And we can see a list of the reports here. And I just mentioned the different continents because once you start seeing any phenomenon on several different continents, it's probably a worldwide phenomenon. Now, ivermectin is one of the macrocyclic lactones. We also have moxidexin in, in all, of, all countries, and even in some countries, we have some additional ones. Um, we don't know how they work, these other macrocyclic lactones, but the rule of thumb is if, if one member of a drug class is failing, then the others are likely to do so as well because they, the reason why they're in the same drug class is because they have the same mode of action. So do not count on any macrocyclic lactone, ivermectin, moxidexin, et cetera, to be working against pinworms. So that leaves the other two drug classes up there, and um, both of those should be working. However, I know right now some of you are sit probably sitting there objecting and going, I tried these, I tried them, and it doesn't work in my horse. Um, we don't have any reports of resistance to these two drug classes. That's how I should put it does not mean that, that there could be resistance developing. Uh, I would not rule that out. And if that's happening, of course, that's very concerning. Of the two drug classes, we recommend the benzimidazoles uh, before we recommend the parentel as the second option. Uh, and then third option would be the macrocyclic lactones if, they, if there's any evidence that they might still work. And this is just based on historic information about which drug class worked the best from the beginning. And that was the benzimidazole, so we get uh, fenbenazole, oxybenazole, and, and other members of that drug class. Um, combination deworming is something that some, pe some people have tried. We don't know how much extra benefit that's adding, but treating with more than one dewormer at the time is uh, something that somebody ha some people have been trying, but it's very experimental. But uh, some people just are just looking for something that works. Uh, the uh, five-day uh, double dose of fenbendazole, the so-called power pack, uh, is something that people have tried. We really don't have any evidence that that's offering any advantages over the single dose. I can't say it's bad, but I also can't say that it's necessarily any good uh, to do that. So uh, we have these different drug classes, and uh, we got to try and be systematic with them and then use them as wisely as we can. I do want to emphasize one thing, and this is common in some countries uh, for, for reasons that I don't really understand, but there is no point in administering the dewormer into the rectum, to the rear end. And I know some of you may be laughing out there, but I'm actually not joking. This is, this is something that's been recommended. Um, it's a misunderstanding because the worms do not hang out in the rectum. They're, they're way far um, up the intestinal tract there and, and too far for any tube to ever reach them uh, from that rear end. And so, and that uh, they don't take uh, residence in the, in the rectum. I did say the female worms are migrating through when they're on the, that suicide mission, but uh, it's very transient and you don't see them uh, spend any time in the rectum. So. There's no point to delivering any dewormer there. It has to be delivered and administered orally. Um, so please do that, and, and please um, just don't don't do the rectal lavage. Uh, it's not helping anything. So I think that leaves us uh, from this, um, you know, with this video, and uh, we covered all the topics. And so, what do we want to learn about the pinworms? Well, the pinworm is the worm uh, with that very strange uh, relationship between the boys and the girls. The boys are never to be found when you need them. The girls do all the hard work, 
they take that long strenuous journey and they commit suicide in the end. How fair is that? So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video series and found it somewhat uh, entertaining, if you will. And um, please stick to um, following this channel or Facebook page and uh, look for future posts. With that, I appreciate your attention and thank you.